on. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Hope you're there. Um, I think I saw earlier Clara jumped on. So good morning, Clara. Feel free to drop a little comment there so I know you're here and just to say hi and welcome to Dave, whatever it is. <laughs> All right, so let's actually start and find a seat. So that could be anything. I'm actually seated in Vajrasana on my shins and on a block. Um, if that creates too much flexion at your knees, you're not feeling it, you can always just start in a cross-legged seated position, Sukhasana. Um, but either way, <clears throat> and then go ahead and just rest your hands comfortably on your thighs. Feel nice and tall in your spine and just close your eyes. So this week, my class classes have been themed around the idea of productivity versus presence. And um, I was inspired by it, one, by Alan, quote, Alan Watts has this quote, stop measuring days by degrees of productivity and start experiencing them by degrees of presence. So when it, all this started, and maybe you're a, a lot like me, when all this began, I felt like I had to still be productive. I feel, felt like I had to have things to do. I was constantly doing laundry. And we're, this, we're just three of us here. <laughs> but I was constantly doing laundry. I noticed I was probably running my dishwasher about five times a day. And then we were producing these classes for, for Facebook and Instagram and, and Zoom. And then one particular day, I decided after taking a shower, I'm going to lay down in my, or stay around in my bathrobe all day and not be productive. And just that simple change had a dramatic effect on my well-being because it was just an indicator to be more present and to really take advantage of the pause rather than what we always do is kind of fill up that blank spot, that opening. Instead, I just relished in the opening, in the space. It's so common for our minds to dwell outside of our present moment experience. Our mind wants to reenact past events or even anticipate or stress over future events that may or may not even happen. When our mind gets pulled away from the present moment, we lose the chance for depth and the richness of the moment of now. So as you're tuning inward, your body and your breath, allow yourself to anchor into the present moment. Taking one more moment as you're still inward. Blink your eyes open. So to begin our practice, we'll practice this pranayama called breath of joy. Um, it comes from the Kripalu tradition back in the 70s. But this breath of joy is a way to bring vitality into our body. And practicing pranayama itself is our gateway to find presence. So watch to begin. It's like this three-part breath. We sip inhales three times and then exhale out through the mouth. But we're gonna add movement within our arms. So it looks like this. First sip, we bring our arms forward. Second inhale, bring the arms out. Third inhale, bring the arms overhead. And then exhale out of the mouth, bringing the arms back. So it looks like this. And then you can go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Don't forget, you're, I see big smiles at home, like, okay, this is kind of weird, but it's a great way, a pranayama. So just start on your own. Again, inhaling, sip, sip up, sip up, and sip back, or out through the mouth, through the back. And then you're just moving again on your own. And then as you're doing so, you notice it starts to agitate the body, which is okay, right? It's supposed to bring prana within. 
it invigorates the system prana being our our energy so bringing already energy into our bodies not just by movement of our arms but also movement of our breath right so it's bringing that chi that life force energy right and just continue on your own you can follow your own pace it could be nice and slow steady or maybe starting to pick up that pace much like say mastrika or kalabati <clears throat> Beautiful. So you can add maybe three more rounds. Last round, let your hands softly rest onto your thighs and close your eyes. And just linger into the residual effects of that movement of your body and your breath. Breath of joy in, ignites what we call Agni, fire within the body. Also too, as you are now just kind of sitting after the effects, it's almost like you just shook up a snow globe, right? And all the little snowflakes just start to fall back down. And in its return, you see space. So take a moment now with your hands together at your heart center. Create an intention within this space you've created. And when you set this intention, let it be something you feel right now in this moment. Nice and blink your eyes open. We'll go ahead and place your right hand down alongside your body. Reach your left arm alongside the ear, and then we'll create just a nice big side stretch up and over towards your right. Create a soft bend into your right elbow so it draws a shoulder away from the ear. I'll start the music on Zoom, so if you're on Facebook Live and you're using my Spotify playlist, Quarantini, you can start this now. And then from here, taking your top hand, just place the hand right behind your head like you're cupping your skull. With your next exhale, curl your left elbow downward towards your right leg. Kind of scoop out your front body as you open your back body. And then inhale, go ahead and open the elbow up, the chest up. And just a couple more times. So we're just adding some movement into our thoracic into the upper back. Now the next time we curl inward, I want you to pause right here. Place your left hand to the outside of your right leg. As you inhale to straighten the spine, just swing your left right hand behind you to find a twist. Feel here that you can extend your right collarbone in the direction that it's facing. Maybe you can turn your chin closer towards your right shoulder. Let's unravel on the inhale. Bring both arms up overhead. And as you exhale, bring the hands to the heart. If you're seated crossed at your leg, switch up the cross. And we'll add our side stretch for the other side. So walk your left hand out to the side. Reach your right arm alongside the ear. If you're like me, I've got um, Kira practicing with us again today. You're gonna have to move later, dog. <laughs> again, staying in the side stretch, simply place your right hand to cup the back of the head. Wrap your tricep inward towards your cheek, and as we exhale, we'll curl in and downward towards our right leg, left leg rather. And then inhale, open up the chest, open up the arm, exhale, and then curl inward. And again, just a couple more times on your own. Recognize how you're just Finding opening and expansion through your upper back, shoulder blades. Now the next time that you're curled inward is the one that will hold. And now place your right hand just outside of your left thigh. Swing your left hand behind you and then inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, rotate open to twist. And feeling your left collarbone extend towards your left shoulder a little bit more so you feel open through your front body. Unravel on the inhale, both arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, slide the hands to the heart center. We'll come onto our hands and knees, tabletop position. And once you set yourself up for your tabletop, just start to move through cat cow on your own. Start to wake up more move or more areas of your spine. Feel free to move a little bit more organically, and you can do this too with the toes untucked or even tucked. So you stretch out the soles of your feet.
Zoom people, can you hear me and the music okay? Yeah, give me a little thumbs up. There you go, perfect. All right, now pause in neutral for just a moment. Reach your right arm forward, then swing the arm up and back behind you. When the hand comes back to the mat, turn the hand so the fingertips are pointing towards your knee. Then reach your left arm forward, up and back, turn the hand again, fingertips point the knee. Reach the right arm forward, up and back, flip the palm so the fingertips are facing forward. Left arm reaches forward, up and back, flip the hand so the fingertips are forward. So you'll get the pattern here. Reach forward, up and around, flip the hand. Left side, reach the arm forward, up and around, flip the hand. And then just moving on your own. Again, finding this flexion in through our wrist at the same time, movement in through our shoulders. Probably some brain work as well, right? Now the next time that your fingertips are facing forward, back into your tabletop position, simply pause right there. Now you might have to lean back a little bit, but I want you to interlace your fingers and then first press the palms to the mat. And you'll notice here, I'm gonna kind of, it's gonna be a little bit of a stretch. You'll, you might not like me afterwards. So lift your hands, but keep the interlace, but now flip your thumbs forward. So now you're facing the palms to the mat and then maybe lean forward towards your wrist and such an intense stretch, not just through your wrist, but you'll feel it into your forearms, maybe all the way up into your shoulders. Can we feel this? Yeah, it's kind of like, oh my goodness. One more breath. Lovely, release that, shake out your wrists. And then lower your forearms down to the mat, but keep your hips still stacked over your knees. From here, turn your palms to face upward and then walk your inner forearms, inner elbows and wrists together to touch. Maybe even the pinkies touch each other. And then just simply rock your weight forward and back. So shoulders past the elbow creases and then the shoulders all the way back. And then just back and forth without separating the forearms at all. So you can just keep that movement going. And again, you'll feel it into your upper arms, into your shoulders. Then the next time your hips are back towards your heels, maybe hold as far as you can here. Again, still keeping the inner elbows, inner forearms, inner wrists, and pinkies touching. And just breathe into the stretch. Shift your weight forward, unravel that, place both hands back to the mat so you step back into tabletop position. Keeping your right knee bent, lift the knee off the mat and then circle out your hip. So simple circles, just like we do in a down dog. Twirl in one direction and the other direction. Then let's tap that right knee towards your right tricep. And as you inhale, sweep the knee to tap outside of your left outer knee. Then exhale, bring the knee back to your right tricep. Inhale, tap it outside your left knee. Again, exhale. Inhale, this time hold it so your legs are crossed. Start to shift your hips back and at the same time, we're gonna walk our hands just a bit to the left side of our mat. So feel your right hip crease steer back to feel a little bit more length of your right side, maybe a great stretch into the lower right side of your back, right into your cue out. That's it, Laurel's, Laurel's kids. <laughs> All right, from here, go ahead and place your hands back onto your mat. When you unravel your right leg, let it float right behind you. Flex the foot and zip the inner thigh to the sky. We're gonna curl the left toes under, coming into a three-legged downward dog. Shoot the right leg up in the air. With your exhale, tap your right knee to your right tricep again. Then cross your right ankle over your left thigh, so you're in a number four position. Bend your left knee deeply so you're in a number four down dog. You should feel this great stretch into your right hip. Actively push your mat down and forward. Then inhale as you slide your shoulders over the wrist. Let's step that right foot outside of your right hand as you exhale. Gently lower the back knee down to the mat. And then as you open your chest to the right, bring your right arm up. And then place your right hand either to the nape of the neck or maybe you'll reach towards your shoulder blade. Wrap that tricep inward towards your cheek and your ear as you just open up and peel the chest to the sky. So you can keep your right foot flex or rather flat and then actively hugging the right leg into the midline. It wants to just kind of get lazy and it collapse to the side. So you can keep Beautiful, reach the arms straight alongside the ear 
exhale, lower the hand to the mat, and then toe heel your right foot over. And from here, I want you to tuck your right knee right into your right armpit. Reach both arms out wide to the side on the floor to 10 into a clock, and then we'll pick up the back knee. So now our legs are lunged, but you still have that knee into your armpit. From here, you're just gonna circle around into your hips. Still keeping the connection of the knee into the armpit, because right in this area is the thyroid gland. It's kind of just moving around fluids, reducing toxicity. Move in the other direction if you haven't already. And then we'll pause to lower the back knee down, come into low lunge on Janayasana. Inhale, we'll lift the chest and the arms up overhead. Your right hand will catch a hold of your left wrist and exhale, side switch up and over towards your right. Feel here your left hip point lift upward towards your left armpit to really increase the stretch of that back leg. Inhale through the center, release that grip. Exhale, lower the hands down, pick up the back knee back to your lunge. Left hand will stay, let's add a twist, reach your right arm up in the air. Revolve. Feel your left shoulder blade so you can drive it onto the back and notice how that changes your collarbones. They allow it to widen a bit further. With your exhale, lower the right hand down. Inhale, let's step back to a plank pose and hold plank. So our shoulder heads are stacked over the wrists. So you can shift your weight so you feel as if your heels are directly over the bottom ends of your toes. Lift the inner thighs to the sky with just a slight tuck of the tail, like you're aiming your tailbone towards your navel center. So it really activates your belly. From here, rock your weight forward to your big toes as you inhale, knees down or not as you exhale, lower all the way downward to your mat. Once you get there, let's interlace our fingers behind the back. Inhale, come into a bound locust pose. So you can fix your gaze more towards the mat or the floor, just directly underneath your nose. So it allows the neck to lengthen nice and evenly. Reach out further through your knuckles, reach out further through your toes as you need to open up through your chest. And then exhale, release that. Place the hands to the mat, shift it back for a moment in child's pose, toes touching or not. Let the chest melt towards your thighs, forehead closer to your mouth. Then we'll look forward and reset back into a tabletop position. So the shoulders are over the wrists, knees underneath the hips. And we'll do our left side. So lift the left knee up and then keeping the knee bent, just twirl around in your hip socket. Then circling in one direction, other direction. And then when we pause, use your exhale to tap the knee towards your left tricep. Inhale, swing the knee just outside of your right outer knee. Exhale to that left arm. Inhale, sweep it outside your right knee. And just a couple more here on your own. That's it, Nancy. Now the next time that knee lands outside of your right knee, so your thighs are crossed, stay like so. Start to send your hips back and then walk both hands diagonally to the right. Reach out just a little bit further through your left side waist as you steer your left hip crease back. Again, you wanna feel more opening in your left side. Let's use an inhale, make our way back onto the mat, shoulders and the wrists align, and then extend your left leg back. Keep it floating and actively flex up through that foot. We'll curl the right toes under for a three-leg dog. Sweep the left leg back and up in the air. As you exhale, take your left knee towards your left tricep. Then cross the ankle over your right knee and thigh. Come into your number four down dog. Keep the left hip flexed and active as you lift your sit bones to the sky, keeping that deep bend in your right knee. Beautiful, guys. Inhale, shift forward. Step the left foot outside of your left hand as you exhale. We'll drop the back knee down and then inhale, open up your chest to the left. Once again, place your hand behind you rather than holding the head so you can work the hand a little further down towards the nape of the neck or towards your shoulder blades. And as you wrap your tricep inward, start to peel your right rib cage to the sky. Nice, straighten through the arm, inhale. Look down and exhale, lower the hand back to the mat as you toe heel your left foot over. And once again, as you lean forward, tuck that left knee into your left armpit, reach the arms out to the sides. Go ahead and pick up your back knee so your legs are lunge. And then we're gonna go ahead and get into that left side, that left armpit. Just moving fluid around, reducing toxicity. There's not many postures that really get into our thyroids. So this is a great one to use. 
Then after you swirl around a few times, let's go ahead and lower the back knee. Low lunge, Anjaneyasana. Inhale, let's lift the chest and lift the arms overhead. Then the left hand will catch a hold of your right wrist. Let's use an exhale to lean up and over to your left. Think about your right sideways getting longer as you lift your right hip point up towards your right armpit. Through the center, inhale, release the grip. Exhale, lower the hands to the mat and pick up the back knee. Revolve lunge, right hand stays. Inhale, reach your left arm to the sky. So you can widen through your collarbones as you shrug your right shoulder blade onto your back. Beautiful, reach your arm forward and down as you exhale. Inhale, step back to plank pose. Rock your weight forward to the big toes. Lower all the way or halfway down. Cobra, or if you're ready for it, upward face. Exhale, downward facing go. Both of us are down in our down dog now, so go ahead and walk it out a few times. Pedal your legs, sway through your hips. Feel free to even pivot the heel to one side or kind of yawn out the body. Kind of switch that out. Then eventually settling into our downward dog with the fingers spread really wide, anchoring down against the bases and the knuckles of our index fingers and thumbs. Think of your that dropping inward towards your ears. Notice how that allows the shoulder blades to lie flat and wide on the back, now allowing the neck to feel less tension. From here, come high in the balls of your feet. Stay on the balls of the feet as much as you can as you slowly tiptoe forward towards your hands. Once you're at the top of the space, either feet close or maybe set at sit bones distance, I want you to place your hands at your calves. The calves are behind. Yeah, these are the shins, these are the calves. Once you grip your calves, Lift them upward towards your sit bones as you stay rooted through your heels and let your head and neck relax here. So it's not about locking out our knees. I want you to feel just the lift of the calves towards the sit bones as you're rooting, really rooting down towards the front parts of your heels. Take another breath. Then release them. Just hold opposite elbows and maybe gently sway a little right to left, side to side. Beautiful. From here, we'll place both hands to our hips, soft bend in both knees, then inhale, we rise all the way up to stand. Exhale, release the arms alongside your body. Bring the feet a little closer, big toes meet with space in between our inner heels. Let's move through Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up, look up. Exhale, hinge from the hips as you dive down to your legs. Inhale, lift and lengthen, Ardha Uttanasana, collarbones wide. Palms flat, step, or maybe hop back, bend the elbows and lower, Chaturanga Nadasana. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog, just the hands and the tops of the feet touch. Exhale, downward facing dog, lift the hips up and back. Hold right there in your downward dog. Soft bend in the knees. That will actually turn on the quadriceps as, you just, if, you're, as if you're trying to push your thigh bones back in space. Stay heavy through the heels without forcing them downward, but to create just as much um, padabandha, so rooting through our feet. Take one more deep breath. Then inhale, lift your heels, bend at the knees. Exhale, step or hop forward to your hands. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Rise to stand, inhale, circle the arms out and up, palms face or maybe they touch. Then as you exhale, we slide it back to our heart center, Samastitihi. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold in half, lengthening downward to the legs. Inhale, lift up halfway, palms flat, feet back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Use your full inhale for upward facing dog. Wait for the pause at the end. That's it, exhale, downward facing dog, lift your hips up and back. Think about how you can really activate the front body to really engage the back body. So front ribs knit in. Notice once that happens, there might create a little bit more space through mid back to low back. Take one more deep breath in your dog. Then inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees. Exhale, step or maybe you'll float forward to your hands. Inhale, we lift up halfway. Exhale, fold right in. Press to stand, reach the arms, lift your gaze, get longer and taller. 
and exhale, slide the hands to the heart space, Samastitihi. Again, inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen, widen your collarbones. Exhale, walk, step, or hop back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, set the shoulder blades on the back. Firm up the belly as you lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Nicely done. All right, from here, inhale, lift your right leg up in the air. As you exhale, let's step the right foot forward, lower the back knee down to the mat. Once again, low lunge, Anjaneyasana, lift your chest, lift the arms up overhead. From here, turn your palms to face forward, let's lock at our thumbs. Then shift your torso back so it's directly stacked over the pelvis and the pelvis over the back knee. So you can scissor in through your inner thighs like your right heel is dragging back to touch your left knee. Notice the power of the legs so you've got a strong foundation. Keep the thumbs locked, but bring the arms forward. And when you do so, stop at shoulder level and then scoop out your front body like you would do in a cat's pose. Then inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. Maybe bring the biceps past the ears so you find more of a cow tilt, cow spine. Then exhale again, arms forward, curl out and round your front body. Inhale, bring the arms back up. Exhale again, bring the arms forward, scoop out your front body. Inhale, bring the arms up. With your exhale, create fists in your hands and then cactus out your arms here. Drive the bottom tips of your shoulder blades forward to your chest to create this little shelf for your heart. Keep the arms the same, straighten the spine as you knit your front ribs in. Then exhale, we're gonna twist to the right. So you can keep the elbows almost in line with each other, holding here, using your obliques to create rotation rather than having to use our arms. Now place your right fist to the right side of your sacrum. Left hand will open up and just place it outside your knee. Now you can use leverage. Your hand and the knee press against each other. Your, hand, your fist, rather, on your sacrum can press forward as maybe as you sit the pelvis slightly forward. From here, slide your right hand now down your left leg. Inhale, reach your left arm up and alongside your ear. With your exhale, create a prayer twist. Now tuck your left elbow outside of your right knee and thigh. Place both hands together in prayer. Think about working your left root cage towards your thumb line, keeping your shoulder blades set on your back. Option here, if you'd like, you can curl the back toes under and lift the knee off the mat. And if you're doing that particular twist, think about your inner thigh lifting up to the sky. That's it, guys. One more deep breath. Beautiful. Unravel the twist. We'll place the hands down. Shift and lift for standing split. Bring the hands slightly forward as you lift your left leg up. Keep your hips square, the foot firmly flexed. With your exhale, let's tap the left knee to your right calf. Sit low into your hips, both knees bent deeply. Inhale, back to your split. <clears throat> exhale again, tap the knee to the calf. Inhale, back for your split. Exhale, tap the knee to the calf. You decide to keep it at the calf or maybe slide it up into the pit of your right knee. Then tap the ball of your left foot just a little over to the right edge of your mat so you can get some balance here first. Now add a twist to this pose. Tuck your left elbow outside that right knee and thigh again, coming into this twisted dragonfly squat. Left rib cage towards the thumb line, shoulder heads away from the ears as you lengthen out from the very back of your neck. One more breath. Look down to the mat, place both hands down, and now we'll swing the left foot over the right foot to cross at our feet. Pinky toe sides of the feet a little close as you walk both hands to the left. Maybe press your hips more to the right. And just let your head and neck relax here as you release your right outer hip. With your next inhale, let's walk both hands back in front of our toes. Exhale, unravel the left foot all the way back and set your feet up for warrior two. Inhale, come up, up to come into the pose. Heel to arch, maybe heel to heel, keeping your torso stacked directly over your pelvis. Shoulders down and away from the ears as you fix your gaze forward. Then flip the right palm, inhale, reverse it. Reach your right arm alongside the ear. Keep the lunge in the front leg as you expand your right sideways. 
exhale let's windmill both hands down to the mat frame your right foot from here back to that dragonfly squat so tuck the knee to the calf or to the pit of the right knee you decide if you want to tap the foot down again or maybe keep the foot floating as you bring your hands to your heart hold for another three two standing crane step onto that right foot now lift that left knee up exhale eagle wrap your right leg over your left leg tap the big toe or lift the foot then lock your thumbs again and inhale bring the arms overhead sit low into your hips and think about just like utkatasana you're lifting through the chest aiming your sit bones towards the very back of your mat now keep the arms the same as you exhale carefully to meet your right foot both knees bent virtually no change from the pelvis to the chest to your arms take one more deep breath keep everything the same but simply come on to the ball of your feet tiptoe out this chair shape then very slowly toe squat like you're sliding your back body along the wall sending the hips downward to the heels hold here for a moment knees in line with the hip creases Breath is deep and steady. Stay on your toes. When you release your hands down, open the knees out wide, and then spider crawl your arms forward. Let your head drop for just a moment. Breathe. <sighs> Still with me? All right. We're gonna make our way to down dog. So if you want, you can go ahead and place the hands to the mat and practice crow pose from here. So combine those toes again. Knees and the shins up into the triceps as you shift your weight forward, lifting the heels up towards your sit bones. Calves closer towards the back of your legs. Round the upper back and then really pull the belly in. So you're using core strength to feel more of that buoyancy. Hold another three. Nice, Trisha. Two. One. Step or hop out, Chaturanga Dandasana. Nicely done. Nice, Lexi. <clears throat> All right, take a deep inhale through your nose. Open your mouth, sigh the breath out. One more like that, deep breath in. Long sigh out. All right, keep your lips sealed as you revisit that depth of the breath. Then inhale, lift your left leg up in the air. Exhale, step the left foot forward, we'll lower the back knee down. Anjaniyasana, low lunge, lift your chest, lift the arms overhead. Again, once you're here, let's actually keep the upper body stacked over the pelvis, over the back knee. Really press down against the top of your back foot. Notice it turns on the hamstrings of the leg rather than dumping down against the knee. Then we'll lock our thumbs once again and then switch that. And then you know you're moving the other habitual way. And then bring the arms forward at shoulder level, scoop out your front body. So belly pulls in, there's a little tuck of the tailbone. Then cow tilt the spine as you bring the arms up on the inhale. Exhale again, arms forward, scoop out the front body. Inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale. Inhale, arms overhead, release the thumbs, create fists, and then exhale, cactus out your arms. Once again, allow the bottom tips of the shoulder blades to move forward to the sternum. Inner borders of the shoulders move closer to really open up the front body. Keep the arms cactus out, but straighten the spine and knit your front ribs in. Exhale, twist to your left. Notice here you'll probably see that your elbows are probably misaligned, right? So you can actually line them up as much as you can. We'll keep the fist in that left hand and place it to the left side of the sacrum. Open your right hand and just place the back of the hand outside your knee. Find your twist this way, pressing the knee and the hand together, and then using your hand at the sacrum for stability in the pelvis as you maybe start to sink a little further forward into the pelvis. Nice, slide your right hand down the thigh. Inhale, reach your right arm up and alongside your ear. Exhale, we'll lower the hands down, framing your left foot at the top. Standing split, lift your right leg up in the air. With your exhale, tap the knee to the calf. Both knees will bend as we sit into our hips. Inhale, back through your split. Exhale again, knee to calf. Inhale for the split. 
Exhale, knee to calf or slide the knee up into the pit of your left knee. And then we'll tap the ball of the foot to the left side of the mat a bit. Gather up your balance and now we can twist in this pose that right arm swivels outside the knee. Hands meet together in prayer. All right, so once you're there, I want you to think about length, right? So you're kind of really compressed, but see if you can lengthen out the spine as you're rotating your right rib cage towards your thumbs. Nicely done. Look down now, both hands come down. With your exhale, swing your right foot over your left foot so the pinky sides of the feet are close. And we'll walk our hands a bit to the left side of our mat. And think about the hips moving towards the left. Just increase the stretch and release through the IT band and your outer hips. Inhale, we'll bring the hands back in front of the toes. Exhale, take a big step back and set your feet up for warrior two. Use your inhale to windmill up. Again, think about the shoulders in line with the hip creases, or rather your hip points. Actively drive the heels to the mat and in towards each other so you're working on the inner leg strength, your adductors. Turn the left palm. Inhale, reverse it. Exhale, windmill both hands down, frame the foot. Back to the dragonfly squat, keeping the foot floating or not. Knee can touch the calf or up into the pit of that left knee. Hands can move to the heart, find your balance. Hands come to the heart, standing crane. Actively push into your left foot, lift that right knee up. Then eagle wrap that right leg over the left leg. Again, decide just to tap the toe or find a full wrap. Then we'll lock the thumbs once again and bring the arms overhead on the inhale. Think about which chair, so sit into your hips, lift the chest up, make your front ribs in. Keep the arms the same, right foot steps next to the left foot, find chair in your legs. Anchor down against the heel, stay light in your toes. Then now, stay light in the heels, lift them up, stay on those toes here, tiptoe it out, and very slowly come down to your toe squat. Nice control. Once you're there, so you can lower the knees so they feel like they're more in line with the hips, squeezing firmly with your inner thighs. Then as you exhale, release, open the knees wide. Once again, crawl the arms forward, drop the head, take a moment. All right, another opportunity for crow pose. This time, if you want to practice crow to a tripod headstand, and that's part of your practice, go ahead and give yourself some space. All right. <clears throat> so once you slide those up, triceps up into your upper arms, shifting your weight forward, lifting the toes off the mat, you're moving into your tripod, tuck the chin in towards your throat center, lower the crown of the head to the mat. So you can squeeze your inner thighs as you bring the legs up to your tripod. Those of you in tripod, option here, come back to crow, or keeping the legs straight, pike at your hips, shoot the legs back. When you lift the head up, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Nice. Exhale, downward dog. Nice, Nancy. Beautiful. Shoot it back. Great control. All right, walk your hands to meet your feet at the very back of your mat, coming to a standing forward fold there. Peace finger grip around our big toes, pad and gustasana. Inhale, look up, lengthen. Then exhale, fold down against your legs. Point your elbows towards the wall that's behind you. And then so you can lift the shoulder heads away from the bottom tips of your ears. So you can get longer through the neck and let the head get heavy. Then inhale, look up, lengthen. Release the toes to now slide the hands underneath the soles of your feet, Parakastasana. Palms face upward, and then the toes touch the wrist, the fingers graze at your heels. Use your exhale to fold right back in. Maybe not as deep, which is perfectly fine and normal, but I want you to feel here like you're trying to slide the hands out from the feet, but they won't go anywhere. Notice it creates just a little bit more of that space right at your wrist joint.
nicely done inhale lift your head exhale release each hand go ahead and walk yourself forward into a plank pose then lift the hips up and back downward facing dog next inhale lift up the right leg up in the air this time bend at the knee stack up the hips keep the hips stacked but not the shoulders <clears throat> Wrap your triceps around towards your ears and your cheeks, keeping the widening of the upper back. Come high in the ball of your left foot, and as you exhale, bring your right knee towards your right tricep. Cross the right ankle over your left thigh, just like we had done earlier. Bend the left knee back into that number four down dog. Keep the firm flex of that right foot, outer ankle pushing firmly against your left thigh bone. Now listen here, keep the shape of the legs. Inhale, slide forward, shoulders over the wrist like plank. Then as you start to roll to the outer edge of your left foot, step the right foot down, horizon lunge. Sink your left sideways and then actively reach towards the other side of the room. With your inhale, lift the hips up, keep the ankle touching the knee, come back to that number four down dog. Send the hips up and back as you actively bend into your left knee. This time, inhale, slide forward, step the right foot forward as you exhale, back foot flat, warrior one, Vera A. Reach those arms up overhead. So you can get your right knee to stack over your right heel. Then at the same time, so you can steer the hip crease back, actively drawing the femur bone back into its hip socket. Then this left side waist, not only are you shifting that left side towards the front of your space, but think, think about even lifting the left hip point upward towards your left armpit. Drop just your right arm down, and as you exhale, lean forward. Scissor out your arms here, keeping your neck nice and free. Left chest, left side of the belly is just hovering over your, I'm sorry, right chest is hovering over your right thigh. Let this left arm guide you up and over as you inhale, turn to the left, exhale, left arm down the leg, right arm alongside the ear for a side stretch. Inhale up through the center, take your side stretch over to the right. Inhale through the center, keep the right arm up, left arm out to the side, and then turn that thumb down. Go Mukhasana on your arms, so swing that left hand behind you, place it either at your shoulder blades or the nape of the neck. Then that right hand reaches back. Find what's there. It could be your shirt. If you want to grab down and grab a towel, that's perfectly fine. Or even just hold on to your right elbow. Use an exhale now to hinge at your hips and fold down. Aiming that right elbow downward to the mat. So you can press the back of the head against your right arm bone so your chin moves away from your throat center. The front ribs moving to the back ribs so you can feel the back ribs pushing into the left arm. Take one more deep breath. Exhale, release the arms. Place your hands to the hips. Inhale, let's come up out of the pose. Exhale, warrior two. Lunge into your right knee. Fix the feet. Extend through your arms. Turn the right palm. Reverse out your triangle shape. So straighten the front leg out as you lean up and back. Create a little tip of the pelvis like you're disco bumping your right hip up and back. Notice it gives you some space in your low back now. <clears throat> from here let's move right into triangle pose so pivot and lengthen away from the pelvis <clears throat> right hand either to your shin back of the hand to the calf maybe even better you'll place that hand on a block <coughs> excuse me so feel your right shoulder blade drive it onto your back body notice that little movement allows you now to find more lengthening through that right side waist Continue that lengthening of the right side by aiming your right sit bone to your left heel. Countering that, your top rib cage will snuggle into the midline. Now you feel more engaged and corseted into the midline. Seat the left arm alongside the ear as you inhale. Look down, exhale, place both hands inside your right foot. Let's travel to the left, Skandasana. Turn the left toes out, come onto your right heel, sit into your hips. Lots of options to play here. So if you want, thread the left arm in front of your shin, reach that right arm up. Maybe you'll create a bind. Maybe you'll just keep it nice and simple and let the head drop, arms reach forward.
let's all unravel whatever you've chosen to put your arms in. And then as you walk your hands back toward your mat, let's go ahead and sit our hips down, but keep the left knee still bent. You might wanna walk the heel a little further away from your sit bones, so you have space here. Right hand can either place it in front of the inner foot, or if you can manage it, hold on to the ankle. Inhale, reach the left arm up, and as you exhale, lean over to your right leg. Now, it's not the goal to touch the toes, but just exaggerate the left sideways here as you reach forward towards the toes. Notice what happens with your left knee. It wants to follow suit. So see so you can keep that knee still pointing to the sky and stacked over your left heel. All right, that's it, Mary. So let's use an inhale to come up out of the pose. Then as you exhale, we'll swing forward, drop the left knee, and then lunge into your right knee. Find a runner's lunge from here. So just pick up the left knee, tent out your fingertips, look forward. And as you exhale, we'll take the left knee to the right inner knee this time for the squat. Tap the ball of that left foot back. Again, exhale, tap the inner knees to touch. Inhale, step the foot back. This time, inner knees touch, look forward, shoot that left leg forward. Maybe you'll get a little hang time. Maybe you'll play with holding the foot with one hand or both hands. That's it, Trisha. And then drop the bum down. It's like two or three inches, right? Open your right knee to the side. Janu Shrasasana A, tuck that right foot inside your left inner thigh. Inhale, reach your right arm up. As you exhale, extend to the outer part of the leg. So hold the calf, the ankle, or the pinky side of your foot. I like doing this particular version of this stretch only because it gets really into the lower right side of our backs. <clears throat> so you want to feel like your right rib cage is rolling inward towards the left inner leg line. Let's take one more round of breath. And inhale, lift the head. Exhale, lift your chest. Cross your right ankle over that left thigh. So you decide how your pigeon wants to look. You can step on that left foot for a seated pigeon or maybe create double pigeon, Agni Stambhasana. So back to that Agni that we did earlier in our breath of joy, that fire, right? Getting right into the hips that we've moved a lot today. So if you're moving into this double version, <clears throat> keep your feet flexed, ankle over knee, knee over ankle. Then decide to either stay upright, but if you're folding forward, it helps to pause about midway so you can actively reach your sit bones back. So it changes the tilt of the pelvis, allowing you now to lengthen a little further forward and down. Blocks are pretty handy here too, if you wanna place your forearms onto a block or two. And just get a little bit more passive within the head. Just let it drop. You can close the eyes and relax your face. You got one more breath. Inhale, let's lift the head. As you exhale, walk your hands back in if you're folded forward. Now, simply step your right foot outside your left knee and thigh. Ardha Matsi Andrasana, so it helps to walk this left heel just outside of your right sit bone. If your right sit bone is still lifted in this pose, I advise you to maybe straighten out that bottom leg so now the sit bone grounds, right? So once you're here, let's now add our twist. Right hand behind you. Inhale, reach your left arm. Exhale, tuck the arm just outside of your right knee and thigh. You can turn your head towards your back shoulder head as your right collarbone reaches towards the wall it's, um, it's aiming towards. All right, inhale, look forward. Exhale, unravel the twist for just a moment. I'm gonna give you a couple options. So two ways to exit. From here, unravel your legs, vinyasa back, I'll see you in down dog. Those of you who want to arm balance, <clears throat> keep this leg position, go back to the twist where that left tricep is outside of the leg. 
then go ahead and lean into your left shin so you can bring the hands to the mat. Now you choose if you would just wanna bring them to the right, if you wanna shift your whole shape and bring your fingertips forward more for the jump back. But once you bring your hands at that chaturanga distance, shoulders and the wrists aligned, tuck your right elbow into your right hip, lean forward, oh my God, block, <laughs> the rest of my hand on the block. As you lift the legs up, maybe even split the legs out wide. Let's see what's going on here. That's it. Uh, Laurel, try the other way, but that looks like a really cool arm balance. Twist to your right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll see you in down dog, however you get there. Perry, save it for next time. That's it, Laurel. Now, if you want, keep the legs together or open them up. Boom. Nicely done. Back to down dog when you're ready. All right, inhale, lift your left leg in the air. Exhale, bend the knees, stack up your hip. Get not the shoulders, you can keep the shoulders square, but think about that knee aiming to the sky, get more into the hip flexors. As you exhale, take your left knee towards your left tricep, slide the shoulders over the wrists, then cross that right left ankle over your right thigh. Number four, your down dog. So you're bending deeply into your right knee from flex of that left foot and then the ankle against the right thigh bone. Keep the shape of the legs. As you inhale, come back forward towards a plank. Then roll to the outer edge of your right foot. Step that left foot down, horizon lunge. Sink your right sideways, actively reach towards the very back. That's it. <clears throat> Inhale, lift the hips up, the arm up, bring the left hand forward, come back to your number four, down dog, ankle over the right thigh, bend the knees. Step forward to the top as you inhale, back foot flat as you exhale, warrior one. Reach both arms up overhead. Nice, again, this left sideways, left hip crease rather is steering back. You'll notice how the thigh bone now just draws right into its hip socket without changing that knee. The knee is still over the heel. From here, we'll lower just the left arm, reach long through your right arm, inhale, and then exhale it, just lean forward. All right, so there's no twist. We're just lengthening the upper body away from the pelvis. Low belly is drawn in and up, so we're not collapsing against the low back. The right arm will lead you as you inhale, come up out of the pose, turn to your right, pivot the feet, Right hand down the leg and we'll exhale, side stretch over to your right. Inhale up through the center. Side stretch left as you exhale. Inhale through the center, reach the arms up. Left arm will stay lifted, take your right arm to the side, turn the right thumb down, bring that arm behind your back. Again, your option, this is my bad arm, my injured arm, so I'm gonna stay here. That left hand will slide down the back. You know you always have the option just to hold on to the elbow. Take an inhale here. Then as you exhale, let's fold forward into the legs, aiming the left elbow towards the mat. Again, think about how your head pushing your, pushes against that left arm bone and your front ribs hugging towards your back. Allow for some support in your, support in your spine. Take one more breath. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, let's place both hands to the mat. And then fold forward into your wide leg stance. Maybe walking the fingertips to line up with the toes, aim the crown of the head down to the mat. And then here you have an opportunity to invert. <clears throat> if you're fond of maybe this time a bound headstand, bound your sasana. Reminder, this is a intermediate class. So these are postures that maybe you've already done before in class. So, and even if you're not completely inverting or lifting the legs in the air, let your head relax here, reversing blood flow at the same time too, letting the heart move below, or the head to move below the heart. Warren's gonna add just less of a hop in that headstand. There you go. Nice, Mary. My head standers, split the legs out wide, actively flex your feet, work on your landing. Scoop out the belly as you slowly lower the feet down, maybe the heels touch before your toes do. We're back in that wide-legged fold. 
Tent the fingertips underneath the shoulders, look up halfway as you inhale, and just gently move your head side to side, maybe up and down, especially those who went on to the head. And then hands to the hips, inhale, come out of the pose. Exhale, warrior two to the front of your space. Lunge into your left knee, slightly kick the right heel out. Turn the left palm, reverse trikonasana, slowly straighten out through the left knee without locking it. Think about zipping your quadriceps up, and there's that little disco bump again with the pelvis. So lift the left hip up. Again, see if that gives you some space in the low back. Then when you move to triangle pose from here, now the pelvis shifts. So there's a deep crease, crease in the left hip as your left sit bone aims towards that back heel. And then we're expanding through the arms, keeping our shoulder blades onto the back. <clears throat> Feel here or how you can engage your front body to your back body, and it might even allow you just to aim your tailbone closer to your back heel so your lower abdominals will work further. Now reach the top arm alongside the ear with a big inhale. Gaze down, exhale, both hands come to the mound as we pivot to the right, come in through Skandasana. As I pivot around just to face all of you, and once you're in your skandasana, again, do whatever you'd like with your arms. If it is that open arm rotation, if it was a bind, or if you wanted just to let the arms reach forward and let the head drop. Let's release the arms. And as you bring your hands to the mat, ease your seat down to the mat. So keep the right knee bent. So again, I'm mirroring you here just so I can see you and I'm facing you. Right knee bent, maybe the heel a little further away from the sit bone. You can place your left hand to the inside of the foot or hold the ankle as you inhale, right arm reach up, exhale, lean towards your left leg, aiming towards the toes without the goal to actually touch it. Think about exaggerating that left, right side waist opening. Then the right knee that's bent, again, it just wants to get lazy and collapse in. So think of the knee pointing towards the sky, the knee still in line with your heel. Let's inhale to come up out of the pulse. Exhale when you come up. From here, we'll face forward. Go ahead and come onto that right knee. I'm going to switch out my legs. Come into the lunge. Left leg forward, right leg back. Tent out your fingertips. Lift the chest. And as you exhale, right knee will touch that left inner knee. Inhale, tap the ball of the foot back. Exhale, inner knees touch. Inhale, tap the ball of the foot back. Exhale, inner knees touch. Look forward, shoot that leg forward. Maybe you hover for a moment, holding on to the foot or not. That's it. And then slowly have a seat. Right leg will stay straight. We'll place this left foot into the right inner thigh. Janu for Sasana A. Inhale, reach your left arm, and as you exhale, extend out diagonally. Hold what's there, the calf, the ankle, or the pinky side of your foot. And then think about your sternum reaching forward towards the shin. Left, left rib cage rolling inward to your right inner leg line. Let's inhale, lift the gaze, the head. Exhale, come out of the pose. And then coming into your pigeon shape, so the ankle's over that right thigh again. Either step on the sole of that right foot for your seated version or on the Skandasana double pigeon. <clears throat> and I didn't mention this earlier, but I can see a couple of people in Zoom probably have this knee kind of hiked up, and maybe you even lost the connection of the sit bone. So one of two options, if you happen to have something that serves as your prep today, you'll place it in that space. There you go. Good, a pillow works perfectly. Yeah. Then you can either stay upright, or if you're folding it forward, again, think about the movement of the pelvis, right? So you can pause about the halfway point. You can even reach back to actively point those sit bones back behind you, and then continue that fold forward.
Take one more round of breath. Use your inhale to lift the head. Use the exhale to slowly make your way out. And then we'll slide this left foot just outside of the right knee and thigh. <clears throat> Ardha Masi Andrasana. So again, if this left sit bone doesn't make connection, straighten your bottom leg out. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, tuck the arm just outside the leg. Good. Finding your twist, finding your rotation. Turning the head as well towards the back shoulder helps to invite more of that rotation through the cervical. Laurel, switch your legs. Laurel Brandon, switch your legs. <laughs> there you go. All right, here's your arm balance opportunity. And if you're not arm balancing, you can maybe even take a pit stop in a boat pose, not last one if you like. All right, so you know you're still active, you're doing something. Those of you arm balancing, we keep the legs as we have them, that arm still outside that leg. Then as you lean forward, again, you can take the hands to the left side of the mat or even forward if you want to change that whole shape. You have that option to pin that elbow right into your left hip as you find the chaturanga arm. So now you have that support of that left elbow against the hip as you lean forward, bring the legs up and maybe splitting the legs out wide. There you go. Nice, and we'll all meet back. Downward dog. Perry, that was good. A for effort. Yeah. Down dog. Final vinyasa if you choose. And then lower the knees down, child's pose. Let's wrap our arms just outside of our legs. Let the hands rest by the feet. Curl yourself into this little bowl. But breathe so deeply that you can feel your chest, your belly press against your thigh bones to really open up your back body. And from here, place your hands back to the mat, push yourself up. We'll sweep both legs forward. <clears throat> Have a seat. And then keep the knees bent, but take the feet out about as wide as the mat. And we'll place the hands just past the hips. And just windshield wipe your knees right to left, side to side. You'll notice here that you're just kind of giving yourself not just internal rotation, and external rotation in your hips, but I want you even to massage out your glutes. Now, when both knees fall over to the right, keep the knees there. And then push yourself up to create 90-90, so deer pose, essentially. So there's a 90-degree angle in both legs. The ankles and the knees are aligned in both legs. As you pivot to turn your chest towards your right knee and shin, go ahead and now exhale, walk the arms forward and fold right in. So really, it's much like pigeon, just a little bit more accessible pigeon, almost taking that back leg out of the equation so that the shin of our right leg is more in line with the outer edge of the mat as much as you can. One last breath. And then as you walk yourself up out of the pose, pivot back to the front of your mat, both feet as wide as the mat. Once again, a little windshield wipe of our legs side to side. <clears throat> and then we'll pivot the knees to left, keep them left, and then just adjusting the legs again, creating the 90 degree angles of our legs, the ankle and the knee, knee with the hip are in line in both legs. As you pivot towards your left leg, take an inhale to begin. And then exhale, crawl the arms forward and fold over that left shin. So you can even relax the glutes of your back leg. And then in turn, it kind of turns off the use of our hip flexors there. So it just becomes a bit more passive.
And let's walk our hands back in, lift the chest up. As you pivot back to face the front of your mat, let's now bring the soles of our feet together so they come to touch for Baddha Konasana. And actually, I'll give you a couple options here. If you want, the heels can come closer to the sit bones, which allows more of that inner leg strength, uh, stretch, the inner groin stretch. Or if you want something more for your lower back, take the feet forward and then thread the arms underneath your calves, right? And then fold in between the legs. So again, whichever just kind of feel or whatever's calling you. <clears throat> And relax more in your face. Soften the jaw and you feel the teeth slightly separate. And inhale, lift the head. Use the exhale to unravel out of your pose. Close the knees in and then slowly roll down onto your back. Once you're down on your back, let's take a moment just to pull the knees to the chest. You can rock a little right to left, side to side, and just feel your body ground. Let's cross the right knee over the left knee. Slide both hips over to the right, fan the arms out wide, and we'll add a nice spinal rotation here. The knees will fall left. You can keep your chin set neutral or even turn your chin to your right or even turn your chin to the left, right? So it actually creates a nice little stretch into the right side of your neck. Just notice here as your knees that are stacked just feel heavier towards the left edge of your mat. Feel your right sideways, the right ribs, the right shoulder blade melt closer just to get a closer to your mat so you feel more opening on your right side. Inhale, come up through the center. Switch up the cross of your legs. We'll slide the hips left so you can drop our knees to the right. And again, you decide how you want your gaze to be fixed, whether it's towards the sky, to the left, or to the right. And for many of us, and it's perfectly normal, the left shoulder blade has a hard time to find connection. So just aim it towards the mat. It doesn't necessarily have to touch. But as it feels heavier to the mat, your left hip crease pulls away from your left armpit, so it helps to increase that sideways opening. And coming back through center, unravel both legs. Take a moment, either happy baby or knees to chest once again. And if you feel there's something else that you'd like to add to your practice, if back bending is something you want to add, whether it's a bridge or Upadhanirasana, maybe it's nothing at all. Just kind of listen to your body and again, try to take away that idea of being completely productive even in your practice because we've done enough, right? Maybe just recognizing that here we are now grounded on our back body, connected to the earth. We close up with our last postures to now release into Shavasana. So just let your legs reach forward, taking your feet out wide, letting the arms just drop gently alongside your body with the palms to the sky. And together, take a deep inhalation through your nose. Open your mouth and sigh your breath away. Allow your body to let go.
top measuring grade by degrees of productivity and start experiencing them by degree of presence. During this time of isolation, we've created structures and rituals for ourselves to help nurture our bodies and our souls. And the best ways that we can to stay disciplined and intentional and peaceful during these tough times. And since the nature of our lifestyles has changed so drastically, the way we experience our lives can, has to change too. Where we were so used to be driven by to-do lists, now is the time to focus on experiencing individual moments as deeply as possible. To be fully present for ourselves and our loved ones. So let's just start to invite a deeper breath back into our bodies. Move around into your fingers, your toes, your wrists, your ankles. If you're on your back, stretch your arms overhead. Bring your legs together, maybe point and flex through your feet. And then hug your knees right into your chest. Roll to one side of your body. And make your way up into a seated position of your choice keeping the eyes closed and maybe even bringing the hands together in prayer or even placing them down against the chest. Either gesture is one of gratitude first for yourself for being disciplined and committed to your practice. Gratitude always for this practice of yoga, how it steers us away from what happens externally so that we can really work on strengthening our well-being and healing internally knowing that we are completely awake and present within the space we've created at home. Awake and present for the loved ones around us and away from us. And awake and present for ourselves. As the hands meet together in prayer, slide your thumbs up towards your third eye center. And we bow together to seal the practice. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Facebook Live people. Thank you, Zoom people. Enjoy the rest of your day today. Just a quick note, um, on Sundays, I post a meditation that goes along with the theme that I've been doing through the week. So this Sunday's meditation will be on productivity versus presence. Um, so uh, that I instantly put right into YouTube. So um, I hope you guys enjoy the day today. Hopefully it's sunnier in Chicago. Go outside, go for a walk, but stay away from people. Always stay safe, stay healthy, stay loving, and be kind. Bye, guys.